Yes, the Federal Reserve has increased the money stock M2 uh, by roughly 36% since uh, 2020. And this is a huge monetary overhang, and this excess liquidity is now driving up goods prices, consumer goods prices, as well as assets prices. As you know, housing prices, stock market prices all go up, and this is driven by this uh, excess liquidity, driven uh, caused by the Fed. But this all came to a head, it seems like, last week when we saw, the, uh, we saw those CPI numbers that came out. Well, it's... Uh, still to be seen whether this is the end of spiking inflation. I'm less optimistic. I think there are other factors that drive prices further up. The energy, energy price shock all around the world is uh, most likely to show up in even further uh, rising prices. So inflation is not over. Uh, I think it's uh, getting worse, especially so because central banks keep their excessive uh, monetary policy in place. I, I assume you're uh, decidedly not in the uh, transitory camp. No, certainly not. <laughs> because, um, as I said, the monetary overhang is huge. Uh, in the US, roughly 20%, I guess. In the euro area, it's around about 17%. And uh, again, there is an economic law and that says if there's too much money chasing too few goods, prices go up. And this is now unfolding. It's, it's not transitory. And... Um, Especially so because central banks don't uh, abandon this uh, inflationary policy. Well, how bad are these pressures going to get? What do you see inflation looking forward? In the coming two to three years in the US, I can imagine that inflation will be roughly between four and six percent on the consumer price. Uh, as far as consumer prices are concerned, stock markets will continue to rise. Housing prices will go up. Uh, so far, I don't see it really an end to this uh, upward trend in prices. Uh, investors out there that are cognizant of what's happened with inflation, currently, what are they doing right now? Would you say that they're protecting themselves against inflation that they're doing? And then I guess the follow-up question on that, you know, what would be the best strategy for them? I think inflation is still underestimated. Uh, this, this is what I get from discussions with uh, investors in Europe and in the US. People think that inflation is transitory. They believe in what central banks are telling them. But uh, as I said, I think I'm less optimistic and, and I give you some reasons why inflation is going to remain a big, big problem. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Well, the first um, thing you can do is to reduce your cash balances to get out of the US dollar, to get out of uh, Euro and uh, Japanese yen, to get out of these fiat currencies. The stock market is one uh, option you have. Uh, housing, uh, real estate is certainly an option and uh, also precious metals as part of your liquid uh, portfolio. Uh, you say that there's not a wide appreciation of what is happening with uh, inflation right now. Yes, that's my impression. Yeah. Uh, that the one reason may be that um, people still have great confidence in central banks. They believe that uh, central banks are eager to uh, keep inflation or to, to fight inflation. And I would argue uh, central banks cause inflation. And uh, at the moment, the overall debt level in the, in the global economy uh, is uh, at a record high. And politicians have discovered that the real debt burden can be reduced by ramping up inflation. And this is what central banks are doing right now. Uh, it's a policy deliberately debasing the purchasing power of money. Uh, expand on that right now. Why would it be directly causing inflation? You're talking again about the debasing of the currency. Well, inflation at the, uh, in the short run helps to prop up economic growth uh, to, to, to help uh, keep uh, employment at a relatively high level. Uh, first, you get the, the, the benefits, uh, and later on, uh, the costs of higher inflation show up. Namely, uh, the economic system gets dis distorted, uh, savings are getting destroyed. Uh, but uh, we live in a world where uh, people, uh, the, the people in, in governments as well as um, as uh, people in general consider the policy of inflation as the policy of the least evil. Now, Thorsten, uh, we have seen uh, people that have been protecting themselves uh, from inflation with crypto. Uh, this is something that has uh, come up. And then we've seen uh, really the uh, big run up uh, in Bitcoin. Um, what is the flaw in terms of people using Bitcoin to protect themselves from inflation? 
Well, they, they did fantastic, yeah, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was a great trade, yeah. certainly not only protecting them against inflation. Trade it, aside, though, but yeah. is, it, is it something that can protect you uh, from inflation? Well, so far it has, and it has also increased the real wealth of those holding uh, Bitcoin and other crypto units. Uh, going forward, I think uh, we are going to witness a process in which all kinds of prices will move further up. And uh, at the moment, I think uh, gold and silver are under... Uh, estimated, undervalued, and I think this is an area where there's strong upward price potential. And uh, I would recommend for, uh, I would recommend to institutional investors as well as uh, private people to keep at least a part of their portfolio in the, uh, the liquid means uh, in, uh, in physical gold and silver. What should be their expectations of holding gold? Like in terms of like if I'm holding it right now, it's just going to be an inflation hedge for me. Is that correct? Yes, I would think so. Just uh, to give you some numbers, yeah. um, from 1975, if you allow me to look, mm-hmm. look back a bit, until 2020, uh, the annual gold price increase was 8.2% on average. That clearly outperformed uh, the dollar It uh, was only slightly below the stock market return. The same can be observed in the last 20 years. And looking forward, I think I'm quite confident, confident, I may say, uh, that gold will, of course, uh, shield uh, people against the inflationary policies. And uh, having said that, I think gold is uh, going to remain a solid inflation hedge. We're right now, we started the fall in about the 1700s for gold. We're currently right now about at the mid 1800s. Where do you see gold heading from here? Well, at the moment, as I said, I think uh, people underappreciate gold and silver, and Mm -hmm. that uh, shows up in dampened prices. Uh, I think gold and silver have uh, considerable uh, upward price potential. Uh, You know, coming up with a number is, is a difficult thing. But I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we go above uh, $2,000 per ounce in a relatively short period of time. How about uh, other pieces that uh, benefit from gold right now, either looking at the juniors or the miners? Are those other uh, options that are looked at or should they be looked at differently in terms of uh, somebody that might be looking for an inflation hedge? Well, gold and and mining stocks are different things. If, If you buy a mining stock, you buy a business and the business depends on, on the management decision, on, on, on good making, making good decisions yeah. in that firm. And uh, so if you, if you are convinced that you have, great, have a great management team in a certain mining company and the valuation is, is decent, it, it, it's certainly a good investment. But uh, if uh, you don't have an idea of what's going on in a certain mining firm, you should be cautious, I would say. Um, just uh, buying physical gold, I think, is, is the... It's, it's the easiest way to participate in what's happening in the precious uh, metals market and to get uh, an insurance against the vagaries of, uh, fiat, of the fiat money regime.